quite according to plan. Ah, well, it was certainly grand entertainment. Large crowds took the opportunity to go to Ascot for the second and third days of the meeting. On Hunt Cup Day, the weather was again unsettled and a chilly breeze put the fashion accent on furs. Our cameraman spotted Rita Hayworth, together with a lot of other people, suitably dressed for this unexpectedly cold but stylish occasion. Still, if the weather wasn't all that could be hoped for, the racing made up for it, and the Royal Hunt Cup was to provide one of the most thrilling finishes which ever set the judges a problem. The whole field was well bunched together for most of the way. Watch both sides of the course carefully. On the far rails is Terope, and on the near side, impeccable with Gordon Richards up. Yes, they were neck and neck all the way, and as they flashed past the post, few present could have made a decision, and indeed, a photo finish was called for. Here it is, showing that Terope had won by a head. No wonder Beasley decided that his mount was deserving of high praise. Next day, the weather was decidedly kinder, and huge crowds had assembled to welcome their majesties as they headed the royal procession down the course. Princess Elizabeth, Princess Margaret and the Duke of Edinburgh followed close behind and the crowd were able to get a wonderful view as they passed. The big event of the day is always the Gold Cup and the King explained the finer points of the trophy to his son-in-law and to the Duke of Gloucester. Later, His Majesty walked to the paddock, a happy reminder that he is well on the way to recovery. There were seven runners for the two-and-a-half-mile race, with the main interest centred on Elicidon, the favourite, and Black Tarquin. Oh, there's Gordon Richards on Vic Day. A careful tactical plan had been worked out for the race, and two pacemakers, Stockbridge and Benny Lynch, had been provided for Lord Derby's Elicidon. As they come up the straight on the first time round, we see the plan in action. Stockbridge well out in front and setting a cracking pace with Benny Lynch second and Elicidon third. As Stockbridge tired, Benny Lynch was to take over, and as the race progressed, it was clear that the plan had worked. Elicidon in the lead, with Black Tarquin hard on his heels. Then Black Tarquin makes his effort, but Elicidon had the measure of him, and although there was still wasn't much in it, it was clear that Black Tarquin had shot his bolt. About a furlong from home, Elicidon piled on the pressure to pull well clear and win comfortably by five lengths. This time there was no need for a photo finish. Elicidon had done it with plenty to spare. A grand horse, a triumph for Lord Derby and a worthy climax to our pictures of Royal Ascot.